Hello, this is Mel of Mel Sinclair Photography speaking. I can't believe 2015 is almost over. I've decided to make a video retrospective this year as blog readership has been in steady decline. I hope this grabs your attention a little better than a wall of text. Before I begin, I'd like to thank all those people and companies that made 2015 one of the most exciting in my photography career thus far. They are. To Nizzi Filters Australia, manufacturers of high quality low colour cast filters, take your landscape photography to the next level. Visit nizzyfilters.com.au One of a kind photography adventures, of which I'm so proud to be a part of this progressive team. I've made lifelong friends and been to some places I never thought possible. In search of the sublime, go to oneofakind.photography. Dynamic Range Magazine and Leanne and Christine for making this happen taking me on board as a regular contributor and helping me inspire women photographers around the world. Go to Facebook and search Dynamic Range. To the Epson Panel Awards and David Evans for giving me the opportunity to judge amateur landscape and built environment. The experience is invaluable. The AIPP community in Queensland for your ongoing professional advice and the great minds I have met. I'm so proud to be an accredited member. To Nikon Australia for making great gear that I stand by and to family, I couldn't do this without you. Friends, thank you for putting up with my hectic schedules. And to everyone I've met along the way, thank you for following my journeys, reading, watching and responding. The cover photo of this video is taken on January 2nd, 2015, after the weather on January 1st proved to be less than ideal. I visited Beechmere, an old favourite location to catch a high tide on sunrise and say hello to an old favourite tree. On Australia Day, Jan 26, I visited another famous Brisbane Bayside tree, hand in hand with a melted prop clock, and I made an image which is a take on Salvador Dali's The Persistence of Memory, which I titled The Persistence of Melanie. I always did enjoy a good joke. In February, I caught up with a one-of-a-kind team down in Kosciuszko National Park for our meeting. First visit was Siemens Hut, which was a few kilometres into the Kosciuszko National Park and perched on a hill. Still kind of chilly in summer, but bearable and beautiful to be. We stayed until after sunset to watch the stars come out. We stayed the next night at the Aries Tour on top of Ramshead Ranges and got some stellar shots of the ancient meeting ground and watched Jake climb the towering heights. I named a photo after him, called Mr Anderson, after him and his escapades. You just can't beat the weather up here in summer, it's absolutely gorgeous. March was the beginning of a crazy month of photography, starting out with me going back to my past and shooting a music festival. Yeah, a music festival. I jumped into the media pit for one last time for the final future music festival of, well, ever, and uh, got some favourite shots. I had to do this to Drake, apologies to Drake, it was just too funny. Half of March had me exploring Patagonia with one of a kind photography adventures and this place has stayed with me ever since. Its scenery is just unbelievable. You'd swear that I made it up in a 3D generated program but no, these are photographs and this is exactly what it's like. I can't put words to describe how these images make me feel. The sunrises as you see here in this video are absolutely true. What the clouds do is something I've never seen them do before and as a landscape photographer and I think I speak for the rest of the group in saying that we had our jaws on the shoreline along with our cameras watching all of this unfold. The colours were never ending. The light was dynamic and changing and the wind, oh the wind, the wind never stopped blowing but you know what? It made clear skies, lenticulars, and smiles. It was worth it. This bridge was scary, and here is that wind. I was struggling to keep the camera still while taking this short video of a 360 around me, but it shows you just how crazy this wind was and what we had to deal with when taking photographs. Up there, yeah, that's a beautiful sky. And waterfalls streams. It was just stunning. The 1st of April had us finishing off Torres del Paine National Park with a hike up to Mirador Los Torres to see this view. I see 
tall towers sticking out from an arctic landscape. It was cold. I had a battle clava on. But the rain had cleared and we'd walked through the tree line and up the bare face of the mountain. The trip up was incredible. You never quite forget it. Afterwards, we licked our wounds at a hotel and then headed off to Argentina, to El Charlton and Sarah Fitzroy National Park. Here's Jake crafting a zip line across the river while I sat under a tree and watched time pass and write in my journal. I loved exploring the forests, finding places that others hadn't found and watching time go by. And then I got this, the sunrise of my trip, that defining moment. My God, I was excited. I'd worked for it, I'd found it, and this is where I was. Team, next year, can you find it? Later in the day, we headed off to Count Poissonot for a different view, to find different trees, and shoot sunset from a different angle. The next morning, I headed back to the same place, and watched people's headlights ascend the mountain. Meanwhile, I shot a frozen lake and watched the first rays of day gently grace the top of the mountain. The lake in front of me was frozen and being from a hot climate, I love cold things. I smashed the ice in puddles and picked up separate little pieces to examine them scientifically. I wasn't quite prepared for the things I'd find this day but it was definitely worth getting out of a warm sleeping bag for. Later in the day, we hiked up to the final frontier, the final view, this incredible place. We hiked through slippery ice and it did the two hour ascent on the mountain. But us four girls did it. Well done girls. We made it. We earned this photo. I was kept quiet as after Patagonia I was physically and financially tired. However, I did find time to head down to Sydney to capture Vivid and to catch up with my one-of-a-kind photography adventures crew for an afternoon drinks at the Opera House. Vivid is something we don't get here in Queensland and although we're starting to catch up, the lights here are still several years ahead of what we get. Here's my take on beautiful Sydney. June was a quiet month, however, the SS dickey at Caloundra was soon to be removed, so I headed up and got some shots of the old girl before she was gone. July was one of those months you never quite forget, and Antarctic Vortex was making its way up the east coast and bringing with it sleet showers and snow showers. I couldn't miss this opportunity, so I jumped in the car with my friend Matt and we headed down to Goswick. It was a long drive, but worth it. When we got there, the grass was green and the snow increased eventually, giving us this white blanket. It was just incredible. There was moments I was pinching myself through shivers. I couldn't believe this was Australia. As the morning wore on and the snow showers cleared, the sun burst through warming up the landscape and melting the snow. The rest of the day was spent exploring the area to see what we could find, but eventually we headed back. The very next day, the snow continued to drive in, closing the highways. We had to take an alternate route home, but on the way we got to see snowy farms and snowy animals, snowy fields and snowy trees. It was beautiful. August was another slow month, however, I ticked off a major shot off my shot list. The view of surface paradise from the beach. I got the sunrise I wanted, I got the shot I wanted. I was happy. This is the month where I picked up my new Nikon D750 and proceeded to test it around southeast Queensland under a variety of conditions. I tested daytime, nighttime, high and low ISO, as well as extreme zoom. 
I decided it was a winner and took it out to shoot Riverfire, Brisbane's Night of Nights. I watched the fireworks explode over the tops of buildings and oohed and aahed along with the rest of Brisbane. In October, I flew down to Melbourne to attend the digital show and the Australian Professional Photography Awards. I caught up with Sarah Hatton, who took me to Phillip Island, where we watched a plain but beautiful sunset, snacked on crackers and cheese, and popped some ciders while enjoying the view. After the digital show was over, I caught up with Leanne Cole of Dynamic Range magazine, who took me around a street photography walk of Melbourne. We found some great graffiti and some quirky visuals which I have come to love. Melbourne never ceases to amaze, and the graffiti is always changing. November was the month I had been waiting for ever since finishing my Patagonia trip in April. I was going back to Japan with my mum and taking her as a birthday gift. It was not intended as a serious photographic adventure, rather having more of a tourist time and doing some semi-serious photography of the amazing sights. We visited several shrines and gardens, but due to some of the bizarre rules, I was forbidden to use a tripod in most areas, meaning I had to get creative with my shots think about the composition and play with shutter speeds. Highlights of this trip include visiting the Fushimi Inari Shrine, shown here, which featured 10,000 Tori gates sprawled across a mountain top. And while the weather was rainy and miserable, I was definitely not. I was having a ball. Seen here are some of the different temple grounds around Kyoto and the Arashiyama bamboo park but as it was autumn the leaves were out and these were also the main attraction for our visit. Other highlights include a visit to the Arashiyama monkey park and Arashiyama river, Osaka castle, Hiroshima bomb dome, Mount Fuji and numerous other shopping malls around Tokyo. I had a fun time visiting my friend Bill Snyder and he took us around Yanaka, showing us the cats that live locally and how cats are worshipped in certain areas. The finale to the trip was Akihabara, walking around the electronics district and exploring all the different technology that's coming out in the near future. It was a bit of a nerd moment, but I had fun. definitely very keen to go back to Japan sometime soon and do a hardcore photography trip. Watch this space. I'm going to do it. Just like that, we're now in December. On Christmas Day, I took the opportunity to photograph water drops in my mum's garden, something I've been meaning to do for a while, but I'd never had a chance to put the D810 through its macro paces. I also had picked up a new Nikon 20mm 1.8, took it out to my favourite location, Beachmere, and a couple of barbecues where I photographed my friend's dogs and their daughter.
The final shot of the year goes to this beauty from Beachmere and symbolises me breaking through the end of the year. The cloud has gone, the colours are out and I'm dancing. Thank you so much for listening to my video retrospective. It's been a pleasure showing you my year, all the things that I've seen and shot. Remember you can always visit me at melsinclair.com.au and I'm going to try to do more of these videos in the future because why not? Thanks again.